Okay. Um, I got a PM from an older professional black woman. And she was talking about how a lot of professional black women have to be pushy, they have to be assertive, they have to be go-getters, they have to go for the best and brightest because that's who they need to be in order to survive in terms of their, in terms of professional America. So we as professional black men have to be more understanding and more willing to work with black professional black women because this is just how they need to be to function and for them to be successful. Um, and I say, no, we don't. Who you are at work, okay, doesn't mean that you have to be that same person at home. Okay, work, I don't care, you know, who you are. It's always going to be somewhat competitive, especially in the job market that we have now. So everybody has to be a bit competitive. Everybody has to walk out, watch their back. Everybody has to always kind of be looking for, you know, uh, new positions or avenues that may be beneficial. Because you never know when you're going to get fired or laid off or, you know, if they mess with you and say we're going to take away your benefits or, as, you know, some employers will do, they'll work you 39 nine hours so they don't have to pay you full time. Uh, you know, we've all seen it happen before. Um, so we get it. Now, I'm not trying to take away anything from what black women have to do. If it's hard, definitely it's harder <laughs> for black women. But once again, it's hardest for black men. But we understand. But even with that being said, that doesn't mean that you take that home, right? And it doesn't mean that's something that we as professional black men have to deal with. I mean, think about it. As a professional black man, um, you know, we have to always watch our back, right? Because we don't know who is trying to be our friend, but, you know, behind our back, they're trying to hate on us. It's all It's happened before, okay? You know, I've had people shake my hand and say, hey, you know, what's going on? And try to act like we're buddy-buddy, but lo and behold, they're watching me or, you know, they're bringing up concerns that aren't even really concerns behind my back. You know, and this happened to me a couple of times, and luckily, you know, it was other co-workers who, you know, um, I guess, you know, like me, right, let me know what was going on, okay? Um, and it always happens. You know, you never know when you're going to get laid off or when you're going to get fired. So sometimes you always have to be looking for a better opportunity, okay? You just never know. Right? So, you know, if you do see that job that's paying a little bit more, you know, forget the whole loyal job loyalty. You know, if my company is having financial issues, they're not going to hesitate to fire me. Right? So if I can get more money from another corporation or company, I'm going to go do it. Right? It's as simple as that. Um, you know, that's one thing I learned. Don't show any loyalty to any sort of employer at all because they will cut you with the quickness when it's not, when they're not making any money. You know, if you see a better position that works for you, that you feel is a better move, take it. Forget loyalty. Okay? Um, so that's who we are. That's who we have to be. Okay? In order to be successful as professional black men in America. So what if we took that home to our relationships? Uh, honey, I can't really trust you because I can't trust anybody at work. Right? You secretly may be working behind my back. Or, honey, I'm with you, but I'm looking for something bigger and better just because that's who I need to be at work. You know, I'm always looking for the better opportunity. So, you know, it is what it is. That's something you have to deal with. Are you guys going to deal with that? No, you're going to be complaining. Okay? Um, and rightly so. That's not how it should be. Okay? You know, who you are at the battlefield, on the battlef bat battlefield, excuse me, doesn't mean that you need to be that person at home. Okay, it doesn't translate over. It's two completely different environments. Okay, and, and, and this is what hurts a lot of black women. It, it's knowing when to be aggressive and when not to be aggressive. Like I said, I don't buy this whole issue that black women should be upset and mad because of everything that's going on. You know, we're not represented on TV, this, that, and the third. No. If there's anybody that should be walking around with smoke coming out of their ears, like this was some Looney Tunes cartoon, it should be black men. And the black men that are trying, not the black men who don't really give a fuck, the black men who are out here on a day-to-day -day level, white, blue collar in the middle, who are actually trying to, you know, make something, we should be the ones walking around just steam coming off of our uh, uh, head and our ears 24-7, mad and upset. Don't talk to me, don't bump into me, because I might just go off, right? But we're not like that. Why? Well, because when we're at home, we don't need to be that way. It's not going to work. 
No one wants to be around somebody who's going to be, you know, uh, hot-tempered and just ready to go off, who's constantly bitching and complaining about the outside world. When I'm at home, you know, I'm in my domain, okay? What's going on outside in the real world doesn't affect me. Who, who I have to be out there doesn't translate completely into who I have to be when I'm at home. I'm chilling. I'm relaxed. My feet are kicked up. I'm not thinking about school or work or whatever. I'm not trying to take that with me because I know that that person, okay, with the battle gear on and the, you know, the axe and the sword and the shield, that's not going to work at home. Who wants to be around somebody who's like that? So I think a lot of black women have to understand that you just can't be one dimensional. Eventually the business suit has to come on. Okay? Um, you know, it is what it is. I did a video a long time ago. Um, I took it down because it just got out of hand. And I talked about my interactions between professional black women and professional non-black women. Because like I said, you know, that's just what I deal with. You know, if you don't have your shit going on, you know, I'm not messing with you. And I was talking about the nature of our interactions. How it always seemed like when I was with professional non-black women, there wasn't the spirit of, you know, who I have to be in the workplace, okay? Um, and, you know, some of them were minorities as well, you know, Hispanic or whatever, okay? It w there was this understanding that, okay, we're not necessarily in that realm anymore, okay? You know, so it's not about two warriors, you know, uh, talking about what's going on in the battlefield. It was more so man and woman in that personal home environment, okay? Versus my conversations and interactions with professional black women, where it was more so about who we have to be on the battlefield, about our struggles in the classroom, about our struggles in professional America, which is cool, okay? I'm not trying to place a value over it, but if I'm looking at trying to set up my home, okay, right, a lot of professional black women are at a disadvantage. If I'm, if I'm looking for a business partner or a great employee, you know, uh, somebody that I know will, you know, uh, give me their full, complete effort, yeah. But if, not, if I'm not looking for that, right, it's going to hurt you as a professional black woman. So you have to understand to turn it off, right? There, there comes a point in time where literally, you know, the, the, the business suit has to come off and the apron has to come on, right? Um, and not even just for uh, uh, me as a man, because I know some women will write off what I'm saying right now because I'm a man and, you know, I'm a black male, so what I have to say is naturally biased and, you know, wrong. But w what are the kids going to think? Okay, you know, w what are they going to do? Right? Is that who your kids want to see? You know, Miss Businesswoman or Mom? Do you think your kids want to... Uh, see you in a business suit or do they want to see you in an apron or you know in some uh, 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 walking shoes because you guys are going to go walk the dog and play at the park right you know do your kids want to see you angry and upset or they want to see you happy and something that they can run to because they can feed off of your energy so those are the things that we look at <clears throat> those are the things that we understand you know my kids don't need to see me angry and upset because that's going to mess up their happiness, their spirituality. You know, they need to see me in a manner which they get the fact that, yo, my dad can go out, you know, and go through all the things that he has to go through in professional America, but he knows how to come home and be somebody that we like, somebody who's really about us. You know, he knows how to come home and be a dad and not necessarily Mr. So so and so. Or, you know, uh, my job title. So it's definitely something to consider. Okay? Um, and like I said, at the end of the day, um, I'm still not going to buy it, man. Like, if, if anybody should be bad and upset, it should be black men. Because black women have it harder than the vast majority of people in America and, world, and in the world, probably. Um, but black men have it the hardest. So we're above you. Okay, if you're second to none, well, that's great. But, you know, we're in number one. It's as simple as that. So that's my video. Um, you know, hopefully people can understand where I'm coming from. You know, I'd love to hear your take on things. Take it easy. God bless.